Hey everyone, thank you so, so, so much for clicking on this video. It really does mean the world to me that you're willing to sacrifice a few minutes out of your day to consume my content. And guys, today is actually the very first episode of our Light Your Week. Ultimately, this week we're going to be breaking down everything about Buzz Lightyear. Starting off with this movie review, and then on Wednesday, of course, we've got the Toy Story 2 video game review. And then on Friday, we're actually going to be comparing this film to the original Buzz Lightyear series, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. So we're going to be breaking all of that down in Lightyear Week. But guys, we're going to be talking about Lightyear, the new movie, right now. And I do have some conflicting emotions. This was a good movie. I'll tell you that straight off the bat. But was it everything I was expecting? Were there things I could have improved upon? That is sort of what I'm going to dive into this video. But I'm not going to give any spoilers in regards to the story. Do not worry about that at all. But yes, guys, if you couldn't tell, I'm a massive fan of Buzz Lightyear, the character. Um, Toy Story 2 Adventure Game, that was one of my favorite games of all time, actually. I can say that. I think it's one of the best uh, movie video game adaptations of all time. I loved the series growing up. And in fact, my brother and I watched the series every Saturday morning. So Buzz Lightyear's always had a very, very special place in my heart, and so I was very, very excited for this movie. So I've got all of my notes here, so I can tell you exactly what I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy. And let's break down my thoughts and feelings about Lightyear. So this movie actually acts as the Buzz Lightyear movie from the Toy Story films. This is the exact movie that Andy watched, and it's the exact same movie that caused him to want to get his very own Buzz Lightyear toy. So I'm going to be breaking down the in-law Toy Story elements of this movie near the end of my review. Right now, let's talk about the movie itself. Um, honestly, I'm going to say I was really concerned about the fact that they were replacing the voice actor for Buzz, but Chris Evans actually does a really good job. He sounds similar enough to Tim Allen that you can still tell this is Buzz Lightyear, but at the same time, Tim Allen was the voice actor for the toy Buzz Lightyear. This is for the movie, and Chris Evans does a really good job of giving Buzz Lightyear the character, you know, the legendary Space Ranger, he does a great job of giving him power and authority, but also making sure that there are moments where he's humble, where he's calm, where he's collected, where he's loving and caring, and that was great. So Chris Evans did a fantastic job there. The animation, of course, like what were we expecting, is going to be gorgeous. It was beautiful, beautiful animation. Zerg is terrifying. Zerg is legitimately terrifying, and that was one of the things I was really hoping for in this movie. Make Zerg terrifying. They did a great job there. Um, so yes, we've got some absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful animation that is backed from a great cast. Not just Chris Evans, but all of the characters do a great job bringing their characters to life. The voice acting is stellar. So yes, guys, as you know, we're celebrating Light Your Week on my channel, and with that, there is a Disney Plus giveaway. Yes. I'm not lying, I'm not lying, this, this is the truth, right? This is the truth. I am going to be giving one entire year of Disney Plus away. If you win this prize, you're gonna get one year of Disney Plus for free. So all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment on this video. You can then also comment on my other Buzz Lightyear videos that I'm gonna be releasing this week. The more videos you comment on, the higher chances of winning. So guys, go ahead, subscribe to my channel, comment on my Buzz Lightyear videos, because I want you to win a free year of Disney+. Plus. And then definitely something that added a lot to the enjoyment of this film was the use of Easter eggs. If you are a fan of the Toy Story movies, you're gonna find a lot of Easter eggs in this movie. Now what's great as well is they definitely balance this. There were, I can say, like three massive Easter eggs that everyone will be able to pick up on straight away. Those are definite fan service moments. Like it's, it's full... It's just full on fan service. And then there were some more subtle Easter eggs scattered throughout the movie that mainly the diehard fans of the Toy Story movies will enjoy. But what's great, what they really did well is they made sure that this wasn't just a fan service film. This was its own unique film that stood by itself. It had its own identity. It didn't rely on callbacks to the Toy Story movies. It was its own unique story. It was its own unique individual item. So those were the massive, massive things I enjoyed about the film. These are a bit of the more neutral topics for me. Um, this movie did a great job of being a self-contained story. This was a very personal story, especially for Buzz. 
it offered him a lot, a lot of self-reflection. And that's both good and bad in the way that, um, you know, when you think of Buzz Lightyear, you think of this grand, amazing space ranger, this legendary space ranger. Um, this movie feels a little bit too small for him in some regards. It's not grand. It's not this amazing over-the-top action fest. But at the same time, I appreciate that because every movie nowadays is, oh, it's going to be the end of the world, you know, multiverses, especially in the MCU. But every movie nowadays has to have these seriously massive consequences and the stakes have to be so incredibly high. So having a story that feels a lot more intimate was something I definitely appreciated. And I'm, I'm glad that the, the movie makers did head in that route. But I do understand why some people might feel a little bit disappointed that this wasn't the grand, amazing Buzz Lightyear movie that many people are expecting. And so to head into the more negative part of my review now, these are the elements of the film I didn't necessarily enjoy. Um, flip, the supporting cast is annoying. They really, really are. Um, I'm all for, you know, the rookie stereotype, you know, these characters who don't know much but have to learn and grow. But Flip, that was overdone in this movie. Um, we're surrounded, you know, we're, we're, we're watching a movie for Buzz Lightyear, you know, who's the best of the best. But the supporting character is the exact opposite. The supporting characters are, in, in my honest opinion, useless. So you're watching this movie where you, it's like watching a military movie. You know, the, the, the Sylvester Stallone movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You've got these classic 80s action stars. Imagine, you know, they're just the best. They're killing everyone. And then we've got this one character who doesn't even know how to aim a gun properly. Like, that's what this movie felt like in many regards. The supporting cast really took away from the enjoyment of the film for me because there's funny and then there's tedious and then there's annoying. And unfortunately, the characters fell on the annoying side. Now, I will say the actors definitely redeemed the characters through some phenomenal voice acting. But the characters, the way that they were written, that's what really dragged this, a lot of the film down for me. And then my biggest disappointment and gripe with this entire film was how the film actually started. Now, I'm not going to give any, you know, story spoilers. I've said this to you, but this movie makes a point of saying this is the exact movie that Andy watched in 1995. And it opens up so many plot holes. Now, I'll break down these plot holes in my video on Friday where I compare Lightyear to Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Um, but just trust me when I say this, this movie actually opens a whole can of worms when it says that this is supposed to be that movie because there's issues with the timeline, there's issues with the lore from the Toy Story movies. So even if you, we accept the fact that Buzz Lightyear of Star Command isn't lore anymore, it isn't canon, there are things that are said and, and things that are mentioned in the Toy Story movies that contradict what happens in this movie. And that is... You know, as a fan of Toy Story, and this is a spin-off of Toy Story, you'd expect them to really do their homework and research on Toy Story to make sure that the, the, the jokes that they're saying are factual, the plot points are factual, they're, they're law-friendly, they follow the canon. So there's a lot that if you are a Toy Story fan, you're not going to enjoy about this film because it blatantly ignores what's set up in that film. But if you don't care about Toy Story, if you're just looking for a film, you can ignore a whole lot of that. You can ignore so much of it because, so what? So what if it breaks the law? Like it's its own unique identity, which is what I said at the beginning of this review. This movie does bring its own idea and its own flavor to the table. So if you're fine with a new version of Buzz Lightyear, if you're fine with that new idea and new direction, then you're going to love this film. But if you're expecting a one-for-one -one Buzz Lightyear story that's set up in the Toy Story movies, then unfortunately you're not going to be getting that in this movie. But yes guys, this is still an incredibly enjoyable flick and I would recommend that you check it out because Pixar did an absolutely phenomenal job. And um, again, they, they do their animation so well. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. So I would suggest you check it out. But yes guys, thank you so, so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me that you took a few minutes out of your day to watch my review of Latcher. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you again in another one of my reviews. Mm -hmm.